Okay. Hi, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 26th, and you're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. This is um, under our Chaos Code of Conduct. Just keep that in mind. I'm Elizabeth, the community manager. For anybody who's new, in case you don't know why I'm here, that's why. <laughs> I mean, I would be here anyway, because, yeah. you know, it's, fun. it's a fun meeting. Like, we try to make it fun. Because y'all could literally be doing anything else. So you've chosen to spend the day with us, or at least the next 50 minutes. So we appreciate you very much. Here's the link to the minutes that Matt just put in there. Thank you, Matt. If you uh, would like to tell us if you eat eggs, I was thinking about Easter. What is your favorite way to eat them? Just curious. I want to see if there's something I haven't tried or heard of. That'd be amazing. Only the chocolate kind. Yeah, that's the best kind. I agree, Dawn. Okay, we'll jump right into the agenda because we do have some things on here. Yay, go us. Uh, we were thinking that maybe we would take a break the week of OSSNA because we have a bunch of folks who are going to be out there. And also sometimes it's nice to just take a break, you know? Um, it is. It could be spring break if you're like here or it could be fall break if you're here. So <clears throat> let's do that. Unless anybody has objections. If, if there are people who are like super into meeting and really want to keep meeting, uh, feel free to speak now. We don't have to cancel, but. Anybody concerned? Like, is there anything important? We do this pretty regularly with OSSNA. Yeah. So it's not uncommon. It's definitely not uncommon. Just that it's week. Just one week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I will change the calendar. Good luck. <laughs> if you find me in the river, you'll know why. Um, uh. I've jumped in. Yes. <clears throat> And I've taken a little swim down the river to the ocean, away from all civilization. Okay, uh, fix or reflect this on the calendar. <clears throat> i also put that in the Chaos Weekly, which hasn't gone out in like three weeks, two weeks. It will go out this week because I re-up stuff to put in there. So, uh, newsletter. Okay. Any questions, anything else on this before we move on? All right. So last week we started talking about the code of conduct, these two uh, code of conduct committee topics. Um, mostly this one, I think, is the one that we wanted to talk about and we didn't get a chance to. So I don't see Anita.org .org on the call today. Am I missing them? No. Okay. Uh, so let's wait till they're here since they need to drive that conversation. Anita does. Um, so we'll come back to that. If they pop in, there we go. Uh, here's another item from last time that Peculiar wanted to bring up was a follow-up for the Chaos Onboard Course Volunteers. And I don't know. If, oh yeah, Peculiar, you're here today. Would you like to talk about that? Oh, yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Sorry about the last time. My internet was disturbing, so had a bit of challenge. Okay, so for the onboarding courses, um, thank you everyone for volunteering to work on that. And so far, we've made progress and we have some scripts. Um, we have a video recorded by someone, and we also have uh, some script written already, then waiting for, looking for someone to make video for those courses. And though we still have a long way to go, so this is a follow up and then trying to encourage uh, all the uh, volunteers to, you know, try to create our time. If you want to take up uh, the script that it has already been written, it will be very easier and faster for you to record the video. So um, we're encouraging 
those that have already volunteered to come on board to help us record the videos. And then for, uh, for using Kios uh, Zoom to, for recording, um, we can reach out to Elizabeth. We had a talk on that last time. So I know she has something to say about that. Yeah. So that's what I have for or clear some body. As someone said last time, pinging uh, the person on the issue was like kind of disturbing. So I restrict pinging us on the issue. But then I would like to know which other way can I also maybe remind us, especially those that have already assigned issue that have been assigned to. So I would really need help on that so as I'm following up. Which other way can I reach out? Should I go ahead, ping you, or just drop the reminder in the small group DM? Yeah. So can anyone suggest? Well, thanks for all you're doing, Peculiar. Um, are you having luck with people recording the videos? Okay, try to hear if anyone is saying anything. Or is anyone hearing me? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're we here. You can't hear us. Sorry, can someone confirm if you're hearing me or what? Not again. Okay, so I think peculiar. Uh, Hi, what... Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear us? Peculiar. I don't think that she can. Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Um, so if we have questions for her, we can just put them in the chat. Um, I think what she was saying, uh, okay, I'll just tell her, okay, we'll put questions in the chat. I think she was saying she, she was asking for two things. Um, that's one, Matt, she was needing help with people, trying to recruit people to record videos. And the second was to find a way to gently remind folks who had already signed up. Because she didn't want to be like intrusive or like naggy, but um, not sure how to actually ping people. All right. Well, okay. Um, yes, I can hear. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I mean, I can, peculiar, I can record the videos for some of the decks that I've made. I was just, trying to see if other people wanted the opportunity to do that. Because I have the script written. I think it's it should be as easy as just reading the script. But I can do it. OK, that would be great. Um, OK. Some other person uh, that volunteered, um, I've assigned issues to them. But for, for the scripts you wrote, OK, no one has already, no one volunteered to record the video. so. That's awesome if you also record the video. Yeah, I, and I can do it for all of them that I make, all of the slide decks that I make. It's no problem. Awesome, that would be great. That way it will just take care of it for you and you don't have to worry about like trying to find somebody else. So I'll do one because okay. I'm doing the context working group slide deck. Okay. I'll just record that as well. Okay. okay, great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So it's also that we still we have a lot of issues. So please, if you still if you want to, you are free to pick up an issue and then drop a sign to you, write the script, record the video. Everyone is welcome. Yeah, and I'll I'll put it out here too. Like the thank you everyone. The, thank the you, Matt. Yeah, you bet. Peculiar. Um, the slide decks themselves—they're like five slides. Sometimes, you know, it's just. 
um, like what is, for example, like what is the context? What are the context groups? It's just like a slide for each one of them and kind of describing what we're trying to accomplish with the context working groups. That's it. And then the video will be <laughs> honestly about five minutes, you know? So yeah, these... I think my governance one was about five minutes. Yeah, they're just they're not really... pretty, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So if people who are familiar with the chaos project would like to step up or like be interested in recording some of those videos or those slide decks, that would be really great. Yeah. And then like Peculiar said before, if you want to record um, and you want to use the Zoom, Chaos Zoom, which is kind of what we were hoping to do, just let me know. I'll block some time off on the calendar for you so nobody pops in on you and it doesn't conflict. Is Zoom, if you use free Zoom, I mean, you can, can't you just use a free Zoom account as well if you didn't need to use the Chaos Zoom account? I and think you can, you know, and I, I think actually that's probably better for a lot of people, especially people with in kind of lower bandwidth situations, because you can record it locally. You don't have to record it on the in the cloud. I think you can just record it to your computer, mm -hmm. or use something else. I mean, there's lots of free tools like OBS, for example, that that people could use. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes. Absolutely. Um, if you don't have like the space on your computer to save that big file, that's totally fine that we can just record you. Then you can use the chaos zoom, or if you don't have any, any um, other way to do that, happy to, to have that as an option for people. And then you can just record to the cloud and then you don't have to worry about sending it to somebody or getting it to somebody. You can, it'll just be there, but yeah, absolutely. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to use zoom. Chaos zoom. Okay. Yes, Sophia, we have topics on GitHub on education uh, repository. We have topics and uh, I will share with them with you. Yeah, I think Matt just put that in the in the chat. So all of those issues, which are here. We also will need editors maybe too for some of these. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, and a lot of those, a lot of those issues will they're kind of like create the script and do the recording. So a lot of like if you did if I just sat down and did both, that would take care of a couple issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you, Peculiar. Um, yeah, one other you, question Elizabeth. that Peculiar had was what is the best way to reach out to folks who have expressed interest but haven't done it yet like me <laughs> like months ago and hasn't done it yet <laughs> do, do people yeah. have yeah on how to how to just touch base with those folks <laughs> okay yeah i asked those question because i i picked someone on on the issue so the person was like oh this makes me agitated so I prefer another way. So I, I was trying to find out. Uh, I don't want, so I'm not disturbing anybody. So if there's any other way, I can remind you apart from just posting on the group, um, reminding everyone. Okay, you can just let me know. I prefer to reach you out the best way for you to be reached. So I don't go disturbing someone. I think quite a few of us would just rather be um, reminded on GitHub, frankly, I would, I would prefer that. I would say if there's, if there's a person who finds that intrusive, maybe that individual can suggest another way for them, for you to contact them. You know, as okay. long as it's not too frequent, as long as you're not, you know, as long as we're not getting reminders every, every week or something, I think it's, I think it's fine to do it on, on GitHub. I, I didn't find that intrusive when, when I was doing the governance one. I don't know, somebody yeah, else has a different opinion. Yeah, oh, no, just once in a, once a month I, I've done that. Then, but on the small group on Slack, so I do that once. I just post generic for everyone.
Okay. Well, um, yeah, thank you again, Peculiar, for, for all your help with this and keeping it all straight and organized and moving forward. Uh, really, really, really appreciate your work here. So thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Peculiar before we move on? Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Gary slash Matt for this uh, discussion on the to-do book chapter. Gary, you're listed first. I am listed first. It's me. Um, so we had the uh, yeah, we had um, a conversation with Anna um, about the to do book chapter that she's looking at chaos to help contribute to. It turns out that there's actually a few chapters that we might wind up contributing to because they're looking to identify problems that OSPOs normally deal with and then also solutions separately in, in chapter uh, five. So chapter four is supposed to be identification and chapter five is supposed to be solutioning. Um, and I think that uh, we wanted to just kind of have that conversation here um, because Matt has been asked to be a liaison between that OSPO working group and chaos in general and the uh, to-do book for this topic and uh matt has also put a tremendous amount of effort into this to do book chapter um writing a lot of it uh himself and gathering feedback through the various working groups so i think we just wanted to kind of bring this up and i think matt you might have some questions or actions that you want folks to contribute to but i'm also planning on helping translate this into github so yes, thank you. Uh, yes, and thanks, Gary, for being willing to help out <laughs> in getting this in a final state. I think the to-do group book chapter, for those of you that have been kind of in that OSPO meeting, came up a long time ago. I think we looked at when this, what you're looking at here started, and it was almost a year ago. It was in April of 2023, yeah. Yeah, and so um, what we did is what you're seeing here is uh, just kind of uh, open con notes from open conversations that we had about just challenges and how you overcome particular challenges around some goals that different OSPOs have. So that's kind of the end of the chapter there. The rest are just notes down below. And so what you're looking at is just kind of the, the set of notes that, that were taken during these OSPO working group meetings. Um, I think Anna has been pushing to bring this back and kind of structure it a little bit better. We, there was a lot of like uncertainty we had around how we were supposed to write the chapter, how it was gonna connect with other chapters. It was just a little challenging, like any book um, where the chapters might be connected in some way. We didn't have a lot of clarity on that. Um, and so then on, so we're, so this is back on, this is back on the, the list of things to be worked on. Um, next, uh yeah, monday april 1st at 10 a.m u.s central is a meeting with ospo book contributors that i'll be going to and i should be getting some more clarity anybody is welcome to join that meeting so if you're interested just let me know anna had put the connection details in the ospo working group slack channel um, so that's about it. Gary hit on a lot of things. There are a few extra things as well, but it's slowly moving forward. And the volunteers, I think what we're going to need is that book chapter that Elizabeth was showing because it's just like listed points down below. Like just click on, just scroll down a little bit. No, just scroll. Yeah, see how it's just like A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. We're going to have to get this into narrative form at some point. <laughs> so actually writing this out would be helpful. If anybody has an interest in participating in this, please let me know. Or Gary. That's it. Thanks. 
Anybody have questions for Gary and or Matt? No? All right. Then we'll move on. Uh, oh, the next one is from me. Just a shout out of love to you all for being so patient and I'm so sorry. Um, I just wanted also to ask the chairs if you can just like check your meetings, let me know if there's changes. If I screwed something up, it's highly probable that I did. So just double check um, and I will make whatever changes we need to make. Also, um, just a reminder to right click to copy the file, the ICS URL to add it as a URL and not click on. If you click on the ICS file, it will only add that event. It will not add the whole calendar, it will only add an event. So um, if you right click to copy, then you have the URL and you can subscribe with the URL. That's that's like the best way to do it. And again, I'm so sorry that everything has been so screwed up. We do have the old calendar still around. So if you uh, want to still keep with that, it's still there for a while. Um, you will need to resubscribe to that because the, the link changed to that. Um, so just click here and you'll have to resubscribe down here and i love you all and i'm so sorry so thank you we should do this every year reflect and change our calendar i think so yeah it's that's so a exciting <laughs> it's a hot topic for a long time <laughs> great yeah because yeah i need a, my i need my heart rate to be higher all the time <laughs> It's good uh, cardio, actually, cardio says if you raise your resting heart rate or raise your heart rate and then lower it. Yeah. Fun fact, when, when I was watching the Bengals in the Super Bowl, my Fitbit thought I was working out because my heart was really <laughs> so hard. I got credit for those calories burned, even though I was just really pissed about the football game. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions? Any Anything about the calendar? It feels like it's coming to closure, honestly. Maybe, I hope. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> by, the time, by the time the daylight savings comes around again, that's when it will be. I know, it will be. <laughs> I'll be stable then. Okay, and I will fix the link somewhere. The link to these minutes got broken. I don't know why or how, because we've had these minutes forever, um, but I will fix them, so. Again, if you see something, just let me know and I'll fix it. Moving on to badging. Uh, oh, we did have this this morning, so I guess I can delete that because we already had that. Uh, thank you to those who came to the new Badger orientation sessions. Anybody is interested in learning about what it means to be a Badger, feel free to join this uh, next session. You, you only need to attend the one. You don't need to attend a bunch. And you are not committing to anything by attending. So at the end of the session, you will have a link that is a form you can fill out that is like, okay, yes, I want to do this. So don't feel like if you attend, you have to do anything. Um, but here's the next one. And I wanted to give a shout out, a huge shout out to Arinka for um, jumping on the badging lead team and helping us assign badgers, keep it going. Um, she's also gonna be the one to issue the badges. She can do that. Um, and <laughs> because she's amazing, when I was going through it with her yesterday, uh, like there's hey, a lot John, of- you mute. Oh yeah, sorry, I hit the wrong keyboard. I'm back on the other one. <laughs> oh, I muted you, Sean. Um, so you can unmute if you're at the quiet keyboard. I am. But um, I think <laughs> said that there were things that she could probably automate for that process because um, it is a lot of manual stuff right now. So, yay. She's amazing. Um, just want to give her a shout out. Um, and then, Kevin, you I see you added an event badging reflection. Do you want to talk about that real quick? Do we, we have time? I think so. Uh, let me hold on. Do we have chaos? Yeah. Well, like, OK. Let's start uh, conversation. I think we're okay. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. That'd be great. Uh, so a little bit, this is a, a proposal uh, to move something forward and a question on where we can have this conversation. Uh, but I'll 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 kind of I'll outline the uh, the idea here. Uh, so and and by the way, this is not a the the event badging program has been incredibly successful. 
Uh, and anything I say here is not a critique of the work that's been done prior or any of the work that's being done currently. Uh, but I do have concerns about kind of the state of the, the program or initiative uh, and where we go with it next. And uh, to, to kind of outline those concerns, I'll, I'll start with the kind of the uh, mention a little bit that the history of the badging in that it it started in our DEI working group, right? Uh, and then it got separated out into uh, event badging because we wanted to build a tool and a process around it, right? So it's been running for the most part independently from the DEI working group since we split that out. And there are some people that exist in both spaces, obviously. Uh, but my, my concern is that the, the program, uh, because we kind of split it out, it's kind of become detached from our DEI metrics. And I would, and I kind of, I would propose that we maybe take some time and kind of reflect on what our goals were for the badging program. Uh, maybe re -reflect, reflect on the process, uh, reflect on what metrics we are measuring and how they're related to our chaos metrics or how they're connected to our chaos metrics. And then the, the last part I would say, because uh, I don't think we've done this yet, we've been collecting data for multiple years. Uh, perhaps we should take a peek at these responses that we've been getting over the past couple of years and reflect on that data that we've been gathering and see if we could use that data to uh, kind of compare it with the the goals of our project to, to see if the if we're moving towards the outcome that we desire or towards the the goal that we desire but I, I I think right now we're kind of we've become a little bit disconnected from the metrics uh and the process works right the tool is great uh but in uh in looking at the uh the process I I worry I worry that badging could could become kind of a, a rubber stamp machine uh, for for DEI badges. Uh, and uh, I guess I, I'd just like to maybe take some time and have some some discussions uh, about that. And I and I think there are some some hard questions that we probably need to talk about. Uh, and maybe DEI working group is the place to have that. Maybe maybe there's another place. Uh, the the badging Slack channel seems like it's mostly geared towards kind of operations, right? So badging, the badging bot and reviewer training, uh, kind of this, this high level discussion about the badging program and where we go with it. Uh, I'm not sure where that discussion should happen. Uh, I suppose it's the, and, uh, and then I, I will let others comment if they'd like. So Kevin, we do talk about DEI badging in the DEI working group almost every week. So that right. is, oh. so I mean, that is at least the place to talk about it. Yes, yes. Uh, so I, I know we, we do get updates in there. So, uh, but the, uh, the design discussions, uh, we haven't had any design discussions in that group for a while. I think most of the design discussions are occurring in the, uh, in the uh, like, like the yes, like what kind of design, like the structure of how the process, how the process is outlined, and how it's connecting to our metrics. For example, if 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 the DEI working group is defined a defined a metric, how we measure that using the 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 tool that we've created, uh, I don't think we have those conversations anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, specifically, so when uh, oh sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I just don't think we've had them. Like, I just, I think we've been, we've added some metrics to the badging process, or at least we're in the process of adding some metrics to the badging process, a lot of process in there. And so we have had discussions about that. And we were waiting for the, you know, how there's kind of that bursty period of time when a lot of event applications come in. We were kind of waiting for that period to be over for adding those new metrics, but I feel like we had a pretty solid discussion about what those metrics could be in the DEI working group. So, okay, perhaps I perhaps I missed that one. 
Uh, and just to be clear, this is not a critique of uh, I don't any think of the work that's been one. done. Yeah. Uh, uh, but in, in looking at the process, uh, there are some areas that I think we kind of need to address. And one of yeah, them is, I mean, is around demographics. Yeah, and we've been talking about, no, go ahead, Elizabeth. Yeah, I was just gonna say, so that is a breakdown in the checklist itself, which I need to fix and I haven't yet. So we've changed how we approach demographics. We no longer ask them to collect them. We no longer, uh, it's more of like, if you are collecting, he here are some questions that we want to know. How are you storing the data? How are you approaching it? So that has been a, a, a question and we changed the application, but I just haven't changed the back end of the checklist for it, for us yet. It's just like so rewording were, that question that we asked. Were, the, were those changes, were those made in the uh, in the batching group or were those changes made in the working, the DEI working group? DEI, the DEI yeah, working group. We talked about okay. it there. Yeah. yeah. Because, it, yes, so the concern was brought to us by the LF about collecting demographic information. And so that's where that conversation happened was in the DEI working group. That was like uh, maybe three weeks ago, something, two or three weeks ago. Uh, okay, that was recent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a uh, recent thing. Yeah. And we okay. changed the metric itself as well because of that. So um, the metric itself now does not, um, like, it's not so prescriptive in collecting the data. It's more of like, um, if you are going to do this, here are some concerns, like make sure you're, you know, uh, aware of like the PII and the data storage and things like that. So um, we did change the metric as a result of that conversation as well. Okay, so what, what I'm hearing is that these conversations are happening in the DEI working group. So if I want to have them, I should go there. Yeah. Okay. Or, um, yeah, yes. I mean, I, one thing that you do, there are a couple of things. Two, one is we do have the two channels, which is badging and DEI. And we might want to talk about like just sorting that out. You know what I mean? Because that could create some confusion. I think having those two channels in Slack is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Should we combine them? We can talk about it. It's possible. Fewer, fewer channels is better. Yeah. And and we do seem to have all of our badging like sync conversation in DEI, not seem to. But that's where we have them all. Yeah, Sean, go ahead. I would I agree with that. That's certainly where we have the discussions today. I think from an operational perspective, there are some aspects to badging which is a program under dei as i've understood it historically where that just does get run a bit separately like the badging uh mentoring that you did this morning elizabeth or the project badging work that uh, enoch uh, and the team in chaos africa and i have done uh, so there are i guess so my point is there are some what i'd call operational concerns around badging that are separate from dei keeping them in one channel. I don't have a position one way or another. I was just pointing out that, that there is this distinct work that is happening with badging. I will also say in the badging Slack, we do have links specific to badgers pinned at the top. So like there's a link that says new badgers click here and that has all their resources. So we, we could add that to the DEI working group if, if we think that that won't be confusing or weird or noisy. Um, Oh, yeah. so Kevin, do you have, did you have a list? It looked like you had a list of like things. Cause if you I, could. I do, but I, I don't miss there. There are some things that maybe I don't want to say on a recorded channel. Um, Sorry. Okay. So how, how do you want to share them? It sounds like you do have concerns about how the process is going. I do, I do. I'm, uh, I, I'm a little worried that uh, that the uh, the current process isn't connected to our metrics uh, very strongly, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm a little worried that the uh, 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 that we've kind of we've kind of created a process where it's it's easy for uh, it's easy for people to apply to. Uh, kind of copy paste their responses uh to to get the badging right so
I mean, to be fair, a lot of those events are run by one org, so they have similar approaches across. So like there, you're right, there probably is a lot of copy paste and that's in my mind, that's okay because the org is the one running the events and there are a few differences, but they're mostly run the same way and have the same kind of resources and such and uh, codes of conduct and things like that. But um, I do understand kind of what you're saying is like, it seems a little cookie cutter maybe. Um, is the is the goal of this program to improve DEI at events or make events more inclusive? Uh, if the yeah. recognize yes, the work, yeah, and to recognize the work that people are doing. A signal, yeah. I think, is one of the goals. It's just a signal. Okay, a so the I I think maybe it would be interesting to look at some of the responses we were getting. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that that's that's fair. I think uh, what Don just said. We this uh, as as was said earlier. This this is probably a better conversation for DEI. So. Okay, let's add this to the agenda. This also gives some people a little more time to think about uh, the points that you've been making, Kevin. And, and then we, I think we can have a more productive discussion about it. Thank you. And, uh, and yes, Matt, I do have a, I do have a, a list of kind of a list of concerns. <laughs> you're not so, comfortable sharing them, maybe you could like before the next meeting like like um uh i don't know think think about how to share how to share them in a way that makes you comfortable as well you know what i mean i just don't want it to and and once again i, I preface it by saying i'm not i'm not trying to criticize any any past work or even criticize any particular organizations that uh are are badging because the a lot of them they're doing a great job and and the, the the fact that they're even trying to get badging shows that they're they're interested in uh, uh, inclusivity. Uh, but I, I just uh, I guess I I I I'd like to share my concerns without making it seem like I am uh, calling out any specific people or organizations. I guess, sure. uh, cool. which is which is not my intent. Okay. Well, we can we can bring this up at the next DEI yeah. working group. Bring it up tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I won't be there, but yes. I don't know if I'll be there either, but I think Sean's going to facilitate. So. Okay, perfect. Thanks, okay. Kevin. Um, this piece too, the data, I think is interesting as well. I think mm -hmm. we could definitely talk about that. Agreed. Okay, let's uh, talk. We have about seven minutes left. We have two more things. Um, this was, I put this on here. Um, so just wanted to have folks think about as we grow and as we are trying to be more globally inclusive. <laughs> is that Sean? That is Sean. My God, it, I, so I got noise canceling headphones on it, but it's my phone, sorry. <laughs> I'm not even hearing it is the weird thing. So, uh, all right, that's gone. Um, so anyway, so as we grow and we try to accommodate uh, folks at all, all across the globe, um, how we do this for the different working groups. Uh, it, we've seen it in the Chaos Africa group where they've kind of branched off and done some dev meetings, some design meetings um, that are, are open to anyone, but are mostly uh, Chaos Africa folks. Um, we have some folks that are interested in attending DEI working group, but the time is very restrictive. So, um, you know, just kind of thinking ahead, how we, if we want to follow kind of that chaos Africa lead where once the community reaches a certain point that, you know, we, that that makes the most sense to kind of break off and have different, different working, working groups, operational groups, however you want to call them um, underneath that umbrella. So I wanted to just throw that out there um, to see what folks think about that. Like, is there a threshold, you know, where we say, okay, once once a group, once a regional chapter gets to this level, then we know it's an indicator that, okay, it's time to, to change things up a little bit. Would it be like having uh, like similar 
working group meetings. So like having say the DEI meeting in a different region and at the current time we have, is that? I don't know, maybe, or we alternate or we have some other kind of, okay. um, kind of indicator. Um, you know, because we kind of had this issue also with like the metrics models where we were kind of moving it around a little to accommodate the Chaos Asia folks that were really interested mm -hmm. in participating. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't I don't know what that looks like, actually, but mostly kind of if we set a framework in place and have some like metrics, if you will, in place. That, so kind of we know like, OK, it's yeah. it's time to break that off. And it's not just like a one off, but it's it's actually we can indicate that the community's grown enough to make some changes yeah or support like additional meetings or whatever it might be okay and then thought about it but did it, does anybody have thoughts on this i think i need to think about it yeah like Ruth, how did you know, or maybe you knew from the beginning, how did you know that it was time to uh, split off and have different groups for different needs and different interests? I think I made that decision at the early start because like when we had our first meeting, a lot of people were like, kind of confused right, about how they would participate and there were some people that were already in the care project even before we started the recall chapter. It was just like some people were like far ahead and then we had a bunch of new people. So having those smaller groups helps kind of position some people that are far ahead to help with these uh, smaller groups and just like connect together. Um, And then just even adding like uh, my thoughts to like Having, I, I, I do understand how difficult it is, like the time zones and everything. Um, to I, I think if, if it's something we can incorporate, right? Um, it would be great. Um, especially opening up like um to people. And I, I think the major concern has been, uh, I think somebody from Australia, the person that talked up the conversation with, so like just getting access to people in that area. Um, looking at our how we have been expanding our local chapter, right? So I think there's something we need to be or should think about doing and just find a way to work around it. The only, the only thing is with I think it's um two different meetings. Um, how do we bring them all together? Maybe doing the weekly meeting that's where like that connection comes, in. even though we have like two separate meetings for a working group. Right, so but, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, because I'm thinking of so in the Chaos Asia in particular, like that's a very small community right now. Like there were three of us in that last meeting. And so like to also then have another meeting, like a separate DEI working group meeting, like that's building a whole other community again, you know? And so I think that um, that having those kind of discussions and whatever, you know, whatever is on their minds in that regional chapter community, um, community meeting might then surface the desire or the, um, the interest of those folks in what they want to talk about. And then if it's, it spurs off from there, then that that's great. But it can also just happen in those meetings too. And I think that's actually back when we had Chaos Asia before, um, when Shoya was the community lead, I think they did have a lot of metrics models um, conversations in the regional community meeting, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I think it will maybe grow organically. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. And it does seem like we would, there has to be somebody who participates in both. Yeah, like then moves back to the other group.
think. Sean, did you have a comment? No, I, I thought Ruth was cut off, but I think she muted herself on purpose. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, we'll think about it some more. Um, we are out of time, and I'm, I feel bad we didn't get to the sonotype report. Is there something very quickly to mention on this? In early discussions to potentially work with sonotype on their yearly state of the open source supply chain report. Um, I, Jeff, it's on a type about this. I know that they've worked with, I think, Grimoire Lab, maybe Petertia, but at least Grimoire Lab in the past. And they would just like to continue this conversation. So if people are interested in participating in this, that would be great. I'll bring it up again next week for the any details that I have learned between now and then. Okay, awesome. I think that was it. Yes, it was. Whew. We had a lot today. Right. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And thank you for your feedback and your input and your engagement. Appreciate you all. Hope you have a great day. And we if, will see you all later. If anybody needs to stay on to talk about chaos kind of things, even just for five minutes or 10 minutes, I can stay on if there's anything we need to sort out. But I was going to drop some things in the um, Slack channel, because I think the only thing we haven't really nailed down is which metrics we're going to cover and who's yeah. going to volunteer to do those. But okay. that's not something we can really decide here anyways. I think it's just something we need to think about and, and figure out. Okay. That's probably okay. easier to plot anyways. Fair enough. Okay. Sounds good.